What's up, everybody? It's Nick Payne with the Face Mask Podcast. Doing another best ball. This one, the first that I am providing with analysis post draft. The draft is done, so we might start to see a little bit of uh, some movement up and down the board, depending on where some of the rookies went, especially some of these top, the top running backs, Najee Harris and Travis Etienne. Uh, their ADP is all over the place. Harris's is rising. ETN's is falling because of where they landed. But now that we know all of the destinations for all of the major players between free agency and the draft, all of the veterans and the rookies, it's time to come back to this. It's time to, well, really kick things into high gear as far as doing this because the early months of the offseason, this is when you can take advantage over your competition if you've been paying attention since February instead of taking a break. So we only need one more person to fill this up and then we'll be off and running. Of course, things are going to change between May and August and May and September. The, you know, these rankings, these, the ADP is not going to look the same as it does now. But this is a pretty strong indicator for, for the time being of where these guys are likely to end up. You know, outside of a couple players here and there, you're not going to see ADP move too much from this point out. Now, obviously, there's going to be risers and fallers. That always happens. Somebody's going to, a veteran will sign with a team and, you know, we'll worry about the incumbent, whether it's a, you know, it's a, it's an interesting fantasy option or not. But by and large, we know what we're dealing with now going into 2021. Oh, we lost somebody. All right. Just waiting on two people, and then we'll get this started. As always, I'm still in the running back business early. I'm waiting on wide receivers as late as I can. Uh, Did a best ball yesterday. I didn't record that one, but I went zero wide receiver as heavily as I ever have. I didn't draft a wide receiver until the seventh round. I loaded up on... I I was able to get Kelsey and, and Waller with my first and third picks just felt appropriate. Uh, got a couple of running backs, got a couple quarterbacks. That's the latest I've gone seventh round without drafting a wide receiver. And I kind of loved it. <laughs> so, well, again, uh, you know, I always preach, keep an open mind and, and adjust, let the draft come to you and draft accordingly. Don't necessarily go in with a single mindset. The overarching theme I'm going to continue to harp on is Get running backs early. If a, if a premier tight end, one of the top tight ends falls into your lap and or it's not too much of a reach, that's just fine. Getting quarterbacks a little earlier in best ball than in, than in a traditional redraft uh, is fine with me. You know, getting one of the elite signal callers in the fifth, the sixth, the seventh round. I have no problem with that because you can still go get other quarterbacks that you like later in the middle and double digit rounds, which keeps with the same, a similar tradition of waiting on a quarterback in redraft, but we'll see what happens. We got two more people. This draft room went from empty to needing six players to needing 10 players to needing two players. And now we're, we're, you know, we're back down to needing one more person. So it's been kind of all over the place. I don't know what everybody's up to out there. Hopefully everybody enjoyed the draft. Hopefully your teams drafted the players you wanted. Congratulations. If you're a bears fan, Uh, they probably won the draft and Justin Fields is going to be an amazing late round target, especially in a tournament like this. Okay. I have the second pick. The last time I did this, I had the second pick and I went Saquon. Uh, Do I do that again? 
I do like mixing things up here and there. Do I go Kamara? I don't think I have a Kamara share yet this year. And he's just like, he's rock solid. You know what you're going to get from him. He's a little less, he's a little less of an injury risk than Dalvin Cook. He's definitely less of an injury risk than, than Saquon. Or sorry, I mixed that up. He's a little less of an injury risk than Saquon. And he's definitely less of an injury risk than Dalvin Cook. Um, whoa. Derek Henry 1.1. Okay, I don't even have a decision to make. This is this is a layup. Uh still believe a believer in McCaffrey. Um Yeah, not you know, I was worried about him coming into last season with the heavy workload. That's over and done with. So, yeah. Let's just take care of that. I was strongly considering Alvin Kamara at that two spot if 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 the 1.1 had been chalk had been McCaffrey, but I'll gladly take a McCaffrey share at my second pick. I have no problem with that. I know there's some big, big time believers in Derrick Henry. I get that. Uh, and I've been wrong about him in the past couple of years, but I know I keep saying it. The workload over the past couple of years is a little concerning. McCaffrey, man, that McCaffrey's fresh. McCaffrey only played three games in 2020. He's fresh. He's ready to go coming into this year. I know the Panthers drafted Chuba Hubbard. Fourth round. Needed a replacement for Mike Davis. Could spell McCaffrey here and there, but. Not the slightest bit concerned. About McCaffrey's workload. Kelsey goes 1.7. I'm at the point now where if the top running backs are gone, uh, McCaffrey, Kamara, Cook, Saquon, and I'm in that fifth, sixth range, I'm taking Kelsey. There's no doubt. It's just, it's safe and it's a leg up on the position. A significant leg up at the position. Uh, we're starting to see Devontae Adams' ADP fall a little bit with the news that, with the continued news that Aaron Rodgers is apparently done playing in green Bay uh, could be smoke could be real. You know, the only person who truly knows at this point, what he's going to actually do is probably Rogers himself, maybe his wife. And he still ends up going at the bottom end of the first round. I'm not fading Adams that much. I had a conversation on Twitter about this earlier today with, with uh, another content creator. Uh, about AJ Brown. Where are we? Are we ready to put AJ Brown or Stefan Diggs over Devonte Adams? I'm not. Uh, the only one that's, that's conceivable at this point is Tyree Hill, which is the way the board went. Adams is awesome. Has proven it's a small sample size, but has proven that he can perform and do well without Aaron Rodgers. If he has to go into the year playing with Jordan love, obviously it's a bit of a downgrade. Well, it's a, it's a big downgrade as far as quarterback play expected quarterback play. But Adams is such a stud. Like he should be safe. He should be fine. He will continue to get peppered with targets, no matter who the quarterback is. So having the a pick at the close to the two three turn, I will be in play for one of the for one of the elite tight ends, and then this crew of Clyde Edwards Alaire, DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins. Got to run on running backs. Cam Akers two point two. It's a bit low, but it also, it doesn't feel, doesn't feel so wrong. AJ Brown, AJ Brown's ADP has, has firmly jumped ahead of Stefan Diggs. And I think that makes sense. Diggs is awesome, but AJ Brown could be the wide receiver one this year. I'm, I, I'm not, I say could, I'm not ready to put him over Adams yet, but there's a ton of vacated targets in Tennessee. 
Uh, not so much in Buffalo. Bills added Emmanuel Sanders. It's just there'll be slightly. Th- I don't know how many more targets Stefan Diggs can get can get with the return of Cole Beasley, the add of Sanders, and the emergence of Gabe Davis. Diggs is still the obvious wide receiver one, but I I think I I'm I'm there with the consensus. I move AJ Brown ahead of him. So there goes Kittle. I have not bought into Najee Harris yet, but he has the clearest path to playing time. It's not a good offensive line in Pittsburgh, but Harris is going to be the guy. That being said, if, if Clyde Edwards, Alaire is available here to me, I really like what the chiefs have done this off season, retooling that offensive line. And uh, maybe the guy ahead of me had the same thought there. (laughs) Um, Okay. I'm going to stick with what worked out for me last night that I feel good about. I am going to nab this last elite tight end option in Darren Waller. No problem doing that whatsoever. I know Kelsey fell a bit bit to 1.7. Kittle just recently went, but Waller is officially at the bottom of that tier, that tier one who is, he's just a level ahead of any other option at the position. And now I'll go back to running back. Depending on who it is. If Harris is available to me here in the third, uh, I might take the, I might take the risk and I will. Uh, He's the clear top guy for playing time. It could be a bit of a disappointment just because he's a rookie and we don't know what we, what we have in, in Najee Harris yet. Hasn't played it down in the NFL, but he has the clearest path to pet playing time. First round pick. So the pedigree speaks for itself. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and take this shot. New ad, new, uh, new ad as far as a share. It's risky in the third round. There's no doubt taking rookies this high is risky. You know, Dobbins is there. Sanders is there. They're, but they're both a bit more established, but you know, Dobbins, Dobbins is a, is in a bit of a timeshare with it's a, you know, a 60, 40, 65, 35 split with Gus Edwards, but um, it is a bit of a timeshare and Sanders. I mean, the Eagles, the Eagles signed Jordan Howard. They drafted Kenny Gainwell and and Hertz will run. I'm a little concerned about Sanders. He'll have his pop games. He'll have his big plays. You know, he can take it 70 yards to the house on any given play. So he can give you he can give you those 13, 14, 15 fantasy points in one shot, but if he doesn't get that, he can be a little inefficient. The more I think about it, the more I'm really not sure how many shares this year in best ball I'm going to have of Calvin Ridley, of Michael Thomas, of, of Terry McLaurin, Justin Jefferson, DK Metcalf, some of these wide receivers in the, with the ADP in the you know high second, low third. I mean, they're great. They're all great players, but I'm starting to embrace this idea of just loading up on seven, eight wide receivers in the later rounds who you know will be involved. They're obviously a step down from these guys up here, but it allows you to prioritize other positions that are more at a premium, whereas wide receiver is far and away the deepest collection of talent. Far and away. Quarterback is second, but quarterback, but you know, you know, there's only one starting quarterback spot. You could start as many as four wide receivers on any given week. So while it's nice to have a stud, you also just, you know, sometimes it makes a lot of sense to just take a bunch of calculated risks with flyers at the position. 
you know, seven, eight, nine, multi- double digit rounds deep. It's probably the furthest I've seen Patrick Mahomes fall. Now, this is a tournament, so. Be a bit more experience in here than your average $3, $5, 12-person entry. See, like, there's wide receivers down here that I, that I, they're starting to come back a little bit. Like David Montgomery will be gone. I assume Josh Jacobs will be gone. Someone will take Mahomes. I would think. I would think one of the players who took either Tyree Hill or, or Patrick Mahomes is looking to stack here. Was this no? Uh, the other thing for me, I'm not really looking to get that third running back now because I have McCaffrey. The idea here, uh, of course, is McCaffrey's going to be a horse. He's going to lock in one of the running back spots the vast majority, if not all weeks. And then snagging Najee Harris for the upside. Going to go ahead and now I feel comfortable attacking wide receiver. If, if, yeah. No, I'm going to go wide receiver here. This is still early enough where you, know, you can get a decent player down here. You're starting to see some of these running backs creep up who were quote unquote winners post draft, say Mike Davis, Miles Gaskin. I'm not there yet. I'm not sold yet. I mean, Mike Davis, maybe a little bit, but the guys come out of the woodwork. Just look at James Robinson. It's a, it's a rare instance, but I mean, Miles Gaskin was a guy who came out of the woodwork last year. Who's to say that there's not somebody lurking this year to take to to, to do the very sa- the very same thing to Miles Gaskin that Gaskin did to Jordan Howard like this is this is the stuff that worries me with guys that don't really have the draft capital or no draft capital His quarterbacks are falling in this draft when yeah, like I like Lockett. He's their team. He's the team's wide receiver too. So that's a little concerning. Just looking down here to see if there's anybody else that I like. Yeah, you know, it's this feels a little early for one of the quarterbacks, even though they're all right here. I'll go Lockett. He, he had a really strong season last year. He, pe- he peters out a little bit sometimes to the end of, at the end of the season. That happens. Uh, that's happened the past couple of years, but still a pretty strong option. Uh, I don't have a stack that is worth creating up here at this point, so I will go ahead and pass on these quarterbacks. Man, I love Deontay. Sometimes you just go get your, some of your favorite players. That's Deontay. I just want him on my team. I just want Deontay Johnson on my team. Kenny Galladay is talented, but you know, he's, he's, he's seeing a quarterback downgrade this year. He goes the very next pick. That's fine. He's seeing a quarterback downgrade. They are, there's a lot of targets available uh, in, in the giants offense, or I'm sorry. There's not a lot of targets available in the giants office. He'll soak up plenty, but Sterling Shepard, Darius Slate, and Evan Ingram, while they're all not very flashy, they are incumbents and Saquon is coming back. Now, you know, you could argue down. Well, Juju's back for Pittsburgh. Yeah. And, Deontay is still their clear wide receiver one and should be a PPR monster. I'm not sure Kenny Galladay is a PPR monster. He can make big plays. But it's a downgraded quarterback. So I'll take Deontay. Deontay. 
I don't know why it just it feels like I'm stealing getting Deontay in the fifth round and I'm reaching like I'm going down the board a little bit to pass up multiple players with higher ADPs. I, I, you know, I'm not with the consensus here. Deontay Johnson is significantly higher in my personal rankings than consensus. Starting to see the quarterbacks go. These wide receivers that I started out with, Lockett and Johnson, are, are both two and three full rounds as far as ADP is concerned, higher than the last draft I did with the first. I, the first receiver I took was Tyler Boyd in the seventh round. I loved that team, though, so I'm not going to be replicating it today, but, but I did get a, you know, an elite option at tight end. I'll take one you know, flyer late. Probably not two, just because I invested a second round pick in Darren Waller. So it's a lot of draft capital. Starting to see a bit of a wide receiver run go here. So some players are going to come back. I, you know, I don't expect Javante Williams to get to me. Some interesting wide receiver options down here. And uh, no, that was a pipe dream. The new pipe dream is now Cortland Sutton. a lot of guys ahead of me that are just now picking ahead of me that already have multiple running backs. Which means we could see these wide receivers get scooped up here. Uh, in which case, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not super enthused about Russell Wilson this year, but I do have Tyler Lockett. So I could stack. I'm just not, I'm not crazy enthusiastic about him. I think I'd rather have. Oh, well, I really want Cortland Sutton here. Him returning. I don't care that the Broncos quarterback situation is shaky. I'm pretty much hoping for him here because I'm not going to know what to do in the next 30 seconds if he's not available. Um, I won't take a quarterback and I'll explain why shortly. Don't auto into Sutton. Damn it. He did it. Uh, this is why I hate people who auto draft. Um, <laughs> this guy has already taken a quarterback, so I'm going to pass here. Um, I could go back to the well with Boyd. I think this is a decent spot for him. Yeah, let's just do that. I'm not going to take a quarterback here because the guy at the turn here has already drafted a quarterback. So I'm going to roll the dice that he doesn't take a second signal caller. And what I can do here is take the quarterback that I do like, which is Hertz. I'm just not crazy about Russell Wilson this year, even though I can build a stack with Lockett. Do I really want to pass up a stack? I always, uh, I always push get, getting and building stacks. Um, this, the Seattle one's just, I'm not sure if that's one I want. Okay, don't have to make that call. I will be taking Hurts as long as this guy isn't doubling up on quarterbacks. This could be a bad dice roll by me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
I feel comfortable with Hertz here. I remain confident that he will be the Eagles starter and that this is decent draft capital for him. He has a new receiver in Devonte Smith. I should make sure to target him later. Taking a guy at quarterback with huge upside because of his rushing ability. He will be the Eagles guy for all of this year. Happy with it. The more I see Odell Beckham, the more I'm out, which is so weird to say and to see him fall to the seventh round. But there's a lot of red flags about his injury history. He's one that I've seen multiple verified sources, you know, injury analysis that they, they have him at the top of their list as far as most concerned. happy I had a pick at the top of the seventh round. These are just, these are middling options. I mean, I like Fuller's good. I like Fuller for, for, for best ball, but that's kind of a crowded group in Miami. Now they drafted Jalen Waddle high. They still have Devonte Parker. Still have Mike Kosicki. They added Hunter Long, who's a pass catching tight end in the draft. Uh, so there's, there's some pass catchers in this offense. They did not invest in running back. So you know, maybe they'll be throwing a lot. Some of these other names down here, it's just not super inspiring. AJ Dillon in the seventh round. You're insane. Ah, we got some auto drafters in here, folks. Oh, no, took it with a second to go. There's been a lot of people using a lot of clock. I myself included, but I'm providing some analysis during my pick. So of course I got to take the time. Explain my thought process as it's unfolding. Debo, I'm a little concerned about at this point, uh, has had injury issues every, every season of his career dating back to college. I do like LaVisca Chenault, though. Quarterback upgrade, year two in the offense. Uh, if I can get Devonte Smith here and stack him with Hertz, I'm absolutely going to do that. Uh, if I'm n- unable to do that, I do have Tyler Boyd, so I wouldn't mind creating a stack with Joe Burrow. Not going to get that chance. That's okay. Uh, the guy here I'm hoping for is Devonte Smith. If not, uh, I definitely like Michael Gallup. I'm a big fan of Brandon Cooks for best ball. Don't have to predict the boom bust weeks, but he'll go off every now and again. Antonio Brown re-signed officially with the Bucks for one year. Absolutely worth a shot at his ADP. Come on, let me get, let me get, let me get Devonte here. Let me build my stack. This guy might be auto drafting though, so that's a major concern for me. Let's take a look at his team really quick. I think he's auto drafting. This looks like a guy who's auto drafting. Oh, he's gonna take Devonte Smith from me. 
Cool. He didn't. All right. The formula gave him a, uh, a running back. Uh, I'm not going to think twice about this. Devonte Smith enters a, a situation where he could be the one that's dicey as a rookie. But if I can build a stack with a quarterback that I like, I'm going to do just that. It's, it's definitely dicey. The, the ADP is high for, for a player who has not played a down in the NFL, but there's high expectations with Devonte Smith. He's a top 10 pick. Should be heavily involved in what the Eagles want to do on offense. And I secure the connection with his quarterback. So I'm good there. Um, probably going to remain out on running back for now. I have McCaffrey Gallup goes see Brandon cooks is interesting here. So is Antonio Brown. Hmm. I'm going to, I'm going to reach a little bit or yeah, I'm going to reach a little bit. Because I have a rookie who's a little, uh, I'm a little unsure of. Let me go get the vet who has been, you know, the wide receiver one for multiple, multiple years. He's past that at this point, but he's not so far removed from those seasons, and he's still not that old. He's got, he's got enough left in the tank. I like rolling the dice on Antonio Brown. Attached to Tom Brady. Bucks are running it back. They have a great offense. There goes Cooks. I really like him for best ball. I think that's a great spot for him. I just I opted for I opted for the guy who, let's put it this way, Antonio Brown is a it's a is a better football player. He's on any given week the third option in Tampa Bay, whereas cooks should be the, the top option in Houston most weeks. But if Deshaun Watson doesn't play, there's a lot of question marks. Let's see. You know, a running back three is in play as long as one makes sense, but I could just continue to, to attack wide receiver. There's, there's the guy. There's the guy. Brady Lawrence. I actually don't have a share of Trevor Lawrence yet. And where we are on the board, I'm not expecting him to fall to me, but Justin Fields absolutely could. I like Ryan Tannehill. I also don't have any shares of Tannehill. I mean, so, uh, multiple off, uh, weapons in this offense departed this offseason. So while they'll still continue to be super efficient and he'll get his, he feels like he's going to be like rock solid, steady, consistent, but maybe not great for fantasy, even though last year he was. And, and Tannehill also runs, but you know how I feel about those rookie quarterbacks on bad teams. Justin Fields could. Could do well. The Bears aren't a bad team. They made the playoffs last year, but they may not win games this year if Fields gets, you know, if Fields gets thrown in right away, we'll see what happens there. We know that Andy Dalton's not going to hold that job forever. Um, like it could be a couple of games before they, they just decide to go to fields if they don't from the start. Uh, Rashad Bateman is interesting here. He's a big target. Some people have, I've seen some hate. I've seen some hate on the timeline that, because of the landing spot. I'm, I'm not as worried about that. Lamar Jackson's actually a pretty good thrower of the football and he prefers bigger targets. Bateman is bigger than Hollywood Brown. Hmm. 
Hmm. There's some tight ends that are coming back to the pack, but I have Waller. I don't want to jump back into that pool. I'm looking at Bateman and I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at Fields. That's what I'm looking at down here. Yeah, if I can get Rashad Bateman here, I'm going to do that. No longer interested in any of these running backs in this area, so I will continue to wait. Madison's interesting, but I can get him later. Okay, I'm up. Uh, yeah, I'm going to continue to hammer wide receiver. Again, I know I only have two backs. I'll worry about that later. I have Christian McCaffrey. I'm not overly concerned. Let's, let's take a guy who's got a ton of upside. I'll get a tight end two later. I'm up. Uh, yeah, I'm going to secure my QB2 here. The, the talent at quarterback is starting to dry up a little bit. I like Tannehill. I just, I think Fields has a bit more upside. Yeah, going to do it. For, for a hot second there, I did consider Tannehill just because he's so rock solid. But their offense runs a lot. Chicago runs the ball as well. But some of that could be attributed to they haven't had the quarterback play recently. Moving right along. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this. If you've stuck with me through this, through this long. I got to figure out what I'm doing for dinner. I try to do this in between some of these picks now that we're in the later rounds. And I have a big gap between me and my picks being at the top of the draft. Robert Tunyon falling to the bottom of the 11th round. Again, that's, that's obviously, of course, associated with Rodgers, but his fall is falling is, is significantly more than, than that of Adams. Now, Tunyon's, Tunyon's value is significantly more tied to Aaron Rodgers than Devontae Adams is, so understandable, but pretty good value for a guy who had been going two rounds higher than this prior to the news. Trey Lance is also, that's good value down there too. He's obviously going to be the quarterback for the 49ers. Could start day one. Great weapons in San Francisco. Might need to hold off a little bit more next time and target Trey Lance as a quarterback too. I have plenty of fields. Plenty of shares of Justin Fields.
that's a good spot for Gabe Davis in the 12th round. I definitely have shares of him. He's a decent value and a good offense. Uh, see, Madison and, and Henry, these are some interesting running back names down here that I could take. Some of, these, some of these less interesting names at other positions are starting to creep up to the top of, the, of what's left. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to get Madison here. I just, he's decent depth. When I'm not worried about the guys who I'm expecting to put up big numbers at the running back position, I'll take a guy who, you know, Madison will, will, be, will do nothing the weeks that, that Dalvin Cook doesn't play. But if Cook misses time and he has missed time every year of his career, well, and now it doesn't matter, Madison's gone. Okay, um, I'm going to secure Daryl Henderson here if I can do that. I maybe waited a little too long on running back because the options for the rest of the way are, are not super impressive, but okay, um the guy after me only has three running backs, so could absolutely take one here. So I'm going to Daryl Henderson is to me is a lot like Alexander Madison. Like he's the clear backup. And if the starter misses time, like he should naturally be heavily involved. Uh, for the rest of the way, I could take a QB three. There's a couple there's a couple tight ends here that I like that I might be willing to to just pluck right now. Yeah, with some of these options down down here that are left, I think I might I think I might secure my tight end too uh a little earlier than I may have planned, but then with Waller I'm going to add Gerald Everett. Maybe I should have sta- maybe I should have grabbed Russell Wilson, but I do like Everett this year. Should be the clear top option. Ferkser is also interesting. He was a big uh, post-draft winner. The Titans didn't add a ton of significant pieces to the offense. And they didn't add a tight end. So Ferkser is looking up for, for this year. So is Blake Jarwin, but decided to roll with Everett. We'll see what happens. This is starting to wind down. Got a, got, got a five rounds left. Things tend to move a little faster down here. Uh, just to round this out, um, I'll grab an RB4. thinking something along the lines of like an Elijah Mitchell who joined the 49ers could be a deep committee, but, but should be involved in a good offense that likes to run the ball. That's where my line of thinking is like to, to just round out the running back group, a guy who I'm not relying on, especially in the beginning of the season, but as the season rolls on could prove to be a, a factor. Definitely one more receiver. Uh, if there's a decent QB2 option down here, there's a couple. I 
Like Deshaun Watson is a huge risk. I mean, but down here, the risk is obviously minimalized. I don't like my Everett pick as much now because Blake Jarwin has lasted this long. Hmm. I'm not crazy about it, but this feels like the range to take that chance on Deshaun Watson. He may not play, and it would, it would suck in a tournament to take a zero from, from a player, but what if he does play? There's still a lot of time left between now and the season starts. Like this, this process will continue to play itself out, but man, he could play. I like Blake Jarwin down here. I'm now, I'm now not, I, you know, I, I now kind of regret that pick a little bit to take uh, Gerald Everett so high because Jarwin is so cheap. Uh, McCaffrey's backup is right here. I was just mentioned Chuba. I I don't like taking handcuffs in best ball. Just it minimal. It minimizes the opportunity for you know your highest opportunity of output of performance. So man. I wouldn't normally advocate for taking three tight ends here, but I'm just not super enthused about the wide receiver options or the running back options. So I am going to, I'm going to take Blake Jarwin. I, I have a lot of, I have a lot invested in tight end with taking Darren Waller so high. So that doesn't feel super great, but the value is too good to pass up. You know, it prote- obviously it protects if, if one of those, if one of these three tight ends gets injured, now I have two options instead of one. <laughs> I try to say, I try to tell people not to operate that way. I'm just giving myself like glass half full feels right now for what I feel like now was maybe a bit of a mistake in drafting Everett where I did. Well, that's okay. That's why we do these so that you learn for the next time. I'll fill this out probably with one running back. You know, the options down here are scarce. So instead of reaching just to have, have two more options for the sake of having two more options, I'll probably just take one more hope that I maximize having Christian McCaffrey and Najee Harris. Get one more wide receiver. I mean, let's take a look at this board. I mean, Gamewell, Kenny Gamewell could be involved in Philly. Giovanni Bernard was signed by the Bucks. That's such a crowded backfield. Now, here's a guy. This, here's an interesting guy. I, I mentioned earlier, you know, Mike Davis was a draft winner, but the Falcons still did pick a guy. They still picked JV and Hawkins, and he's cheap. His ADP is not, you know, his ADP is, is pushed down. So that's, see, now there's a decent option to take a flyer on. 
He shouldn't sneak up too high. His ADP is buried pretty good. That's an interesting target. It's pretty good value for Austin Hooper, who, who will be the starting tight end for Cleveland. It's just, it's, you know, Harrison Bryant is there. There's a, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of questions about that passing offense. It's a, it's a run first offense. They, they want to run the ball. Some people think Austin Hooper can be a top eight tight end this year. No, you're, you're, you're doing backflips if you're one of those people getting getting Austin Hooper in the 15th round. The end of the 15th round. But this is what happens shortly after the NFL draft. Rookies will start to supplant players. ADPs can move all over the place. Which is why you have to remain diligent. Keep keep looking down the board. Keep going down the board. Don't stop. Like Identify names where you think to yourself, I like that guy's chance at an opportunity. And then ignore these numbers. Both of them. Ignore the projections. Ignore the ADP. Go get your guys. Like, this is officially a target for me. Does not have a difficult path to playing time. Do I want to take a wide receiver before that happens? Yeah, I think I do. Um, I've warmed up to Jacoby Myers, especially at his cost. Like, they signed Nelson Aguilar. They signed Kendrick Bourne. They're, those are not exactly, you know, Myers will have an opportunity to compete. Those players are, they're, they're good, but they're not exactly like bonafide, guaranteed starters each and every snap. Myers will compete for a job. Now, let me go ahead and star this guy. Put him in my queue. Like, at this point, it's all about opportunity. And this guy's going to have an opportunity. All right. Uh, we'll see what happens here with this, uh, with this final pick that I have. It's 19 picks away, but could be a depth wide receiver. Could be a depth running back. It will, it will guaranteed be one of those two things. Uh, I have three quarterbacks. I have three tight ends. So... Um, we'll see what happens. If you've stuck with me this long, I appreciate it. Uh, I love doing these. I hope these are helpful for whomever may, may watch, whoever may listen. Uh, you're crazy having to stick with me for this long, but if you did, I don't know what to say. I, I would really, I, I appreciate the, the listeners and the viewers and anybody who may value even the slightest bit of advice that I can, I can provide. So. Yeah, so thank you. I'll continue to do these throughout the season. As things change, you know, I'll try to I'll try to continue. I know I I find myself repeating uh things a lot in these, but it, but I think it helps to reassure, you know, part of my strategy. Or if I, I'll I'll let you know, like I may have been thinking one way in May, that, that tone may change in August, you know, things change, but eventually you, you do start to develop players that you like. You find guys that you like that you consider your guys. 
and outside of injury or, or, or on, you know, or a circumstance out of our, you know, what could have been predicted or expected, you know, that's going to stay the same. If you like guys, go get them. I mean, Gio's still here. Don't think I'm super interested. Tariq Cohen, I, I have, I'm, I'm all the way out on. First year coming back from an ACL and was never a runner to begin with. I, I, I'm, I'm incredibly concerned about his future moving forward because of that injury. Um, James White's having Coleman. No. I mentioned Elijah Mitchell. Ty Johnson is interesting. Well, Michael P. Ryan is interesting. Did he go? Did he get drafted? I don't see him down here. Hmm. Did I miss? Did I miss? Uh, did I miss P. Ryan going? Two fourteen ADP. I'm only one pick away. I need to get myself together. No, he's on the board. He's he's there and available, but it's saying he could be the odd man out. So maybe I take a chance on Ty Johnson. I think I'm going to do just that. I'm going to round this out with a fifth running back. Just feels a little safer because I, I invested a little heavier, higher at wide receiver this draft, getting them in the fourth and fifth round. So let me get that fifth running back just for some added depth and should be involved. And that's that. <laughs>